Hi everyone and welcome back to another coding video. The first coding video that I've posted in I think over two years and what a tutorial to be going back with. Today I'm going to be coding one of my favourite mathematical phenomenons and that is attractors, in particular the Lorenz attractor. Now as an aside I realise that there is no video, there's no camera on this video and that's because my current one is broken and I'm currently waiting to get my new one which will be arriving soon. So don't worry, all of my upcoming videos will have my face in it again. <laughs> now, on the topic of the Lorenz Attractor, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about the mathematics of the Lorenz Attractor, and in particular what it has to do with Jurassic Park, then head over to my mathematics channel where I've just released a video explaining all about that. All the links will be in the description. Let's get stuck into it. Okay, so here you can see that I am in Google Colab, which is basically... For those of you that might have used Jupyter Notebooks, it's very similar to that, where you can basically write code and then run it within the script itself, so in cells here. If you've not used Google Colab before, it's actually really, really simple to get started. And I created a beginner's guide last year, just basically showing you how you can get set up. All you need is a Google account, which most of you, hopefully if you're watching this on YouTube, will already have a Google account. And then you just log into your Google account and create a new notebook and then you can get set up and, and started from there. So I'll leave this article in the description if you're interested in getting set up. Now, as an aside, I will also put the link to this in the description as well. So you can basically just open it and run all of the code yourself. And as you'll see later in the video, you'll also be able to play around with different variables here and there to, <laughs> to get different results. So let's jump into what we're actually going to be coding today. So we're going to be looking at the Lorenz Attractor. Now, the Lorenz Attractor, as I've said here, is a system of three differential equations that were originally developed to model atmospheric convection. And it's one of the earliest examples of a deterministic chaotic system. Now, as I said, I've explained all about what this means in my mathematics video. So if you're interested, I'll also leave a link to that in the description as well. So I encourage you to go watch that um, before or after you watch this video. Okay. Now, in this first section, we're going to look at defining the Lorenz equations, which essentially form this Lorenz attractor. We're going to then solve them numerically using SciPy, which is a Python package. And then we're going to visualize the results in 3D using matplotlib, which is also a Python package as well. OK, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to install required packages. As with all of my tutorials, that's what I usually say. All, the first thing to do is install the packages that we need and we're going to be installing matplotlib. Now you might be wondering why we're not installing SciPy and that's because Google Colab have a set of Python packages that they just load in by default and SciPy I believe is one of those so we don't need to load it in we just need to install matplotlib. So if you click the little run button here this will install matplotlib. For those of you that haven't used this before basically when you run it will run the code that's in that cell and the little tick box is basically saying, OK, it's run successfully. If it doesn't, you'll probably get, I think, a cross here and it'll tell you what the error was. But hopefully we won't have that in this video because, as you might already see, there are some tick boxes next to these cells already because I checked before filming this <laughs> that the code in here was working. And it is. So all good there. Now you can also minimise here, show hide output. Because sometimes when you install packages, you, you end up with lots here. So you can... Show it like we've done there. So we've installed matplotlib, which is the first thing we need to do. The next thing we need to do is import libraries. So we're going to be importing numpy as np, which is basically a data analytics library. It does so many cool things. I've got a whole tutorial series on leveraging numpy if you're interested. And then we're going to also use the function solve ivp from scipy.integrate, which is going to basically allow us to solve the system of the, the Lorenz equations, basically. And then we're going to be importing matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and this will allow us to make our beautiful plots. OK, so I'll run that cell. And the next thing that we want to do is define the Lorenz equations, because after all, this is what we're going to be plotting. So these are the Lorenz equations here. They might look a little bit confusing, but you don't need to worry too much about them. They're basically just model the atmosphere and the X, Y, Z here, they have little dots above them. And for those of you that aren't familiar with mathematical notation, the little dot just means it's a time derivative, which means X dot here means DX by DT. So it's a derivative. 
and the same for y and z. So dy by dt and dz by dt. Mathematicians just like to simplify notation where they can. <laughs> so you'll notice that you have x, y and z here and they also pop up in the equations as well. And they are essentially just variables in a 3D system. So x, y, z. And the constants in here, so the sigma here is what is known as the Prandtl number, which is the ratio of momentum diffusivity to thermal diffusivity. <laughs> this is throwing me back to all of my fluid dynamics lectures. And then we have rho here, which is there. And this is the Rayleigh number, which measures temperature difference driving convection. And then we have a beta here, which is a geometric factor. And the standard values that are often used for this system of equations is sigma is 10, rho is 28, and beta is 8 over 3. So that's the equations. And again, if you're interested in learning a little bit more about what these mean, then head over to my mathematics video. But what we're going to do is create a function, as you can see here, that builds these equations. So we're starting by defining a function, which is Lorenz. Now the parameters that we're going to take in here are t, which is the time, state, which will be the x, y, z parameters, sigma, beta, and rho, which are the constants that I described earlier. Now inside this function, which is all of the code in here, we're going to take the state and we're going to let x, y, z equal this state because we're going to be passing in x, y, z coordinates. And so we want to take out the x, y, and z from that. And then all we do is we write the equations. So dx by dt equals sigma multiplied by y minus x, which is what we see for this first equation. And similarly for dy by dt and dz by dt as well. And then all we're going to do is we're going to return these differentials. Now, did I run this? I think I ran this before. Did I? Yes, I did. And I'm going to be running this function as well. Now that we've built this Lorenz function, the next thing that we need to do is set up the simulation parameters. So what we're going to be doing is using this Lorenz system and seeing how it evolves. But in order to do that, we need to have some sort of time span. So how long this is going to evolve over and then also the kind of time points where the solution is going to be evaluated itself. So we first start by defining a variable called t-span, which is the time range over which we want to simulate the system. So here we have t equals zero as the start time and t equals 40 as the end time. And the next thing we're going to do is define a variable called t-eval, which basically creates an array of time points where the solution is going to be evaluated. And so here we're basically generating 5,000 evenly spaced points between 0 and 40. So this gives us smooth and high resolution simulation. So we're going to have, like I said, 5,000 evenly spaced points between these two values. And so we're going to be able to see how well the solution evolves over that time span. The next thing that we need to do is define an initial state. Now we're just choosing 1, 1, 1. So x equals 1, y equals 1, z equals 1 for simplicity. Now, after I've done this tutorial, I'm encouraging you to play around with all of the, the different variables here and seeing what different um, responses you get, different plots you get. So feel free to give that a go after this video. Now, the next thing we need to do is integrate the equations themselves. And the reason for that is because we need what x, y and z are. And so from that, we can take the system of equations that we have here and we can just integrate them. And we can do that using a really beautiful function in SciPy, which is solve IVP here. So we're going to solve the Lorenz system using the runge cutter method. I'll make a separate video on that on my mathematics channel if you want. So comment down below if you, if you want an explanation of that. But it's essentially a way that you can numerically integrate. I have put some other comments here, basically just explaining what each of the each of the different parameters that we're including in here. So we're passing in Lorenz because that is the function that defines our equations. We have the time span, we have the initial state, and we have the specific time points to, at which we want to store this solution. And then once we integrate that, we're going to get what x, y, and z are from this solution. And then what do we do with that? We can plot it. So I'm going to run this. Just realized I didn't actually run this one either, so let me run that one again. I'll run that one and then run this one. And then all that's left to do is plot the Lorenz attractor in 3D. So the first thing we do is set up our figure. We say that we want it to be a 3D axis. And then we specify what we want to plot, which is x, y, and z, because we've just solved for x, y, and z. The line width is going to be 0.7, and we're going to have the color purple, just because it's a, it's a nice color. 
And then these things here just set the title and the X, Y, Z labels. And then this is super important. It's going to show you exactly what we get from the Lorenz equation. So I'm going to run this and it's pretty much instant. You can see this beautiful plot here, which is plotting the Lorenz equations. And this here is what's known as the Lorenz attractor, which quite beautifully looks a little bit like a butterfly. And I know for those of you that, that you know, may have watched my mathematics video or just know about chaos theory in general, the whole concept of chaos theory is that a butterfly could flap its wings on one side of the world and cause a tornado on the complete other side of the world. And so I think it's kind of fitting how this here looks like a butterfly and at the heart of chaos theory is the simple definition of the butterfly effect, which, yeah, I think it is quite beautiful. So feel free to play around with different initial states here. You can, we can, you know, say this is five, we can run this again, run this one again, run this one again, and we get, hopefully you'll notice a, a very different or slightly different <laughs> plot out, which is really, really nice. So that is just plotting it. Now what I'm gonna do is show you how you can plot an animation. So you can see three different starting positions and how they evolve over time. Now we're obviously using Python here. I'm a slightly limited <laughs> with uh, computational power. So the animation runs uh, for a certain amount of time enough for you to see the different states evolving. So we're gonna move on to that now. So here we go, Lorenzo Tractor animation tutorial part two. I'm not sure why that has formatted like that. That should be like that, there we go. Did that work? I want it in bold. <laughs> we're just doing, I'm just digressing here. Okay, there we go. So as I said, in the second part, we're gonna show the animation. So we're gonna do everything very similar to what we did before. We're gonna start with our initial conditions, but here we have three different initial conditions. So this is gonna be initial condition one. So one of our points, it's gonna be another, and it's gonna be the third one. So we've got three. Now we want a slightly longer simulation between zero and 60. And then the time, what we're going to eval evaluate that over is 3,000. I think I originally put 5,000 here, but it just took way too long. <laughs> so just be careful if you're going to play around with this, um, because this animation does take a couple of minutes to run. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create a new function, which is very similar to the one that we had before. It's basically an integrate Lorenz function. So we're going to input an initial state, which will be each of these. And then we're going to solve the Lorenz equations given that is the initial state and the starting system. And again, the, the T eval that we have specified here and the T span as well. And similarly, we're going to use the numerical integration method, runge cutter 45 and returning the solution here. Now we're going to create a list which is called trajectories. So defining a new variable here called trajectories. I can't seem to say that word right. Trajectories. There we go. And what we're going to be doing is basically performing this function for each of these initial conditions. So we're basically integrating the Lorenz equations for each. So in it, in initial conditions. And that's basically saying for each of the initial conditions here. And so we can run this. And then the next step is to show this. And so we're basically going to plot these trajectories that we get from integrating the Lorenz equations for each of these starting initial conditions as well. So to animate the trajectories, we're gonna use a animation function called func animation from matplotlib and then use ipython.display to import to HTML. Now the HTML part, if I can find it, is to basically put all this together and to perform the display in itself. So we're going to display using the HTML function there. So back to this, I think I did this, I increased, I increased the animation size limit because um, I think it was erroring out. I think that's why that was there. Um, so just, yeah, I, w I wouldn't change this just because obviously when you run this code, it does take a couple of minutes to run and I don't want it to take <laughs> forever and you not see your plot. So yeah, just keep this alone. Um, and then the next thing we do is we're going to create a 3D plot. So similar to what we did before, create the figure and the axes. We're going to set the limit for X, Y, and Z. I think this is just basically making sure you can see the animation properly. And then we're going to set the labels again and the title. 
Now this time we're going to have three different colours instead of just purple, just so you can see the attractor itself evolving, the three different states evolving. So we have blue, red, green. Then we're going to define a variable called lines, which is going to be a list. And this list is going to take, contain the three different lines for the three different starting positions that we have. And this update function here is basically just updating each of the lines with their points. So their trajectories, essentially. So that's what this bit of code does here. And then all that's left to do is run the animation with the updates, set some other parameters like the frames and the interval, and then all that's left to do is display it. So I'm going to run this. Now this will take a little bit of time. I think it's about two minutes. Maybe go make yourself a cup of tea or something while you're waiting. Um, for me, I'm going to just skip ahead and do some video magic like I do. And I'll jump to the beautiful animation that will just be created. Okay, there we go. The animation has outputted. And you might see absolutely nothing here. And that's fine because we're going to press play in just a moment. But there is a little bit. In fact, actually, if I just scroll down, you'll see that there's also another plot here. So this is what the end result is basically, basically going to look like. Now, this might look like a blur of different colours, but let's see how the Lorenz attractor actually evolves over time. So if I press this here, it's going to start moving. And so we see the system of three different states evolving. And you'll notice that the colours are now separating. So you can see that the blue and red initially started separating to begin with. And then the green goes and diverges. Now, this simulation itself obviously pauses there. And I tried to optimise time with uh, visuals so that you could see how... I think the beautiful part is... Let me just try and rewind. It's about... If it lets me pause, let me pause. There we go. It's about here where you just start seeing the green. So I think the green was following very closely to the red and then the blue, it just so happens. And then you get to this point here and you can see the three different colours really nicely just on their own separate trajectories. And obviously then the green continues over there, the blue continues over there, here, and the red goes on on its own little little journey. And so I just think that's incredibly beautiful. And you can see the animation of the Lorenz attractor, the Lorenz equations in real time, which I think is, like I said, beautiful. So that is the video that is showing you how you can basically simulate your own Lorenz attractor, how you can integrate the Lorenz equations to get this beautiful plot here and then this beautiful animation here. Now, if you haven't watched the mathematics video on my mathematics channel, the link will be in the description. I encourage you to do so because it's, it's, a, it's a really fun video to make and also kind of cool how it cropped up in Jurassic Park as well, which was quite nice. So all the links to everything will be in the description, including this Google Colab notebook, my mathematics channel and this article that I created on Google Colab. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.